Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 4 The Last Revelations. Zorga is 115 speaking. Let me welcome you to the final Alexandria level, our second visit into Cleopatra's palaces. So by now you should have the mechanical scarab in your inventory. If you don't, you need to collect four uh, black beetles to insert into the scarab pyramid in the previous level, the Pharaoh's Temple of Isis. So if you are lacking this and the winding key, both can be retrieved from there. So check out my previous video. Now, why we need the mechanical scarab in the first place? Uh, as pointed out during my first visit here, there is a spike trap further down in the corridor that can only be safely triggered using the scarab to progress further in the level. Now, I also mentioned that there is a mechanism to be triggered in this fountain over here, so let's do right that. And the reason I didn't want to do it in the previous level is that it will unlock a pickup we can only get here in the second visit. So I just want to have it all together in one video so as not to be separated and confusing. Hmm, these hole switches we haven't seen since Karnak, I believe, so that's a nice change. Okay, now swimming here requires a bit of precision, but should be possible. Come on, after all my Quidditch practice in Harry Potter games, this should be easy. Yeah, swimming does feel like flying into Tomb Raider. It does indeed. Okay. Oh, and another thing, I said we are not going to be able to open that door, but we are going to find ourselves on the other side of that door later on in the level. So, once we do, it's going to be just an interesting sense of progression. Yeah. Okay, now let's go in. By now you know where to go. And let me talk a bit more about the mechanical scarab. It's both one of the most cute and fascinating mechanics of Tomb Raider 4 and also one of the most sadistic ones. So, first things first, if you try to use the scarab on its no. own, anywhere, even on the correct scarab tile, no. nothing will happen. What you need to do is wind it up. So, how do you do that? Simple. You combine the widening key with the scarab, Lara pretty much inserts it in, and then you can use it anywhere. She will wind it up, which is absolutely adorable, put it on the floor, it will get a bit batshit insane and start having these erratic movements, then it will stabilize and do nothing. That's pretty much it. So all you can do at this point is to re-pick it up and no, I will not consider this an extra pickup in the statistics, nothing like that. The mechanical scarabs are designed for these specific tiles, right? So if you put the mechanical scarab over here, where I will again wind it up, it will find the center of the tile, stabilize, aim forward, and then pass through the spike field, setting them off so Lara will not. And nothing will happen to it, and you can re-pick it up on the other side. Once you set off a spike uh, field like this, you will no longer be able to trigger them, so they are safe forever, which is amazing. What is not amazing is that what the game does not tell you is that as soon as you trigger three such spiky corridors, three such traps, if you set them off with a mechanical scarab, the next time you try to use it, it will explode and become unusable. Just like that. And this is not so much a problem in terms of continuing with the game, it is a problem in terms of figuring out how to reach the one and only secret in this level. So I'm going to show you what that means exactly a bit later on in the level. But this is why it's so cruel, because the scarab will not even explode as soon as you are done triggering the third trap. You can still override your save file with the full sense of security that you can use it for the fourth or fifth or sixth time, which is not the case, but the game does not tell you. Bloody hell, that's evil. So, anyway, uh, later on about that, I will show you exactly what that means. First of all, let's take a short detour into this area over here. And what we are looking for in Cleopatra's palaces is pretty much ransacking all the dead members of her court. There are, I think, five or six sarcophagi, sarcophagi uh, in the palaces that we need to open. And what we need to do is find all the remaining pieces of the armor of Horus. I don't know why the left gauntlet was in the Temple of Poseidon, but the right gauntlet, the left and right grief, and the breastplate are all in Cleopatra's palaces. So the pacing is a bit off. Now, also, mind you, you know how there are these bird guardian motifs all around the walls in Cleopatra's palaces? Some of these are taken a bit more literally. They double as a trap, which is really cool. But um, also dangerous. The timing of these can be a bit awkward. It seems easier than it actually is. That's the evil thing about it. So, first of all, press the action key to open the sarcophagus. Same as in Temple of Poseidon. And now we have the gauntlet, but also a skeleton, a royal guard, has emerged. So... Let's lure him into a pool of water where we can knock him down, so we don't have to waste a grenade. Also, we summoned another one, 
so get that shotgun ready. I hope we have white shots equipped. I think we should. Yes, okay. And let's knock those guys down. Okay, that's one. And two. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so that's it for the Royal Guardians. Now, there are going to be actually uh, six more of them in this level. This place is very skeleton friendly. Now, you have a choice between setting off this trap and the trap over there. There's also the mysterious door. Now, this door we are going to open from the inside and it's going to be very useful because we are going to be luring more skeletons into the pool over here. Now, where should you go? The right path or the left path? If you are by any chance interested in uh, getting all the secrets, you should choose the left path. And of course, you have no way of knowing this. You have no way of even knowing that the Scarab has limited uses without me telling you. Ah, oh, this is so absolutely evil. So, we will find ourselves on the other side of this corridor without ever setting off these spikes. We can ignore them. But the ones that we cannot ignore are over here. Now, to make things further confusing, uh, first let's use the Scarab and place him where he's supposed to be. There is another corridor full of spikes right after this one. We are gonna get a better view of it once the spikes are triggered. Oh, and don't run into them directly, you can still take damage from the spikes. It will not kill you, but the damage is very real. And there's another one, so you might be tempted to use it twice and reach that part of the room. Well, don't. This might seem like we are stuck, and all we can do is go back, but if you look up, there's a reason why this step is here, it allows you to climb up. And this is the workaround, which enables you to not use the mechanical scarab too much and reach the first secret. Well, the first and the last secret of this level, the one and only. So here we have a window into the central area, a window into a window into a room. Interesting. But if you jump uh, to the opposite side, you will have made a shortcut to area with another sarcophagus. So let's enter. And we can admire the pool of water. This is kind of cool because opening up this sarcophagus will summon another skeleton. And whilst you can try and knock him into the pool of water uh, with a trap beam behind your back and the columns occupying these tiles, it's very tricky. It usually takes me like three or four shots to really knock him down into the pool. So what I prefer to do is run from this room and knock him somewhere else. And you can uh, hug the trap if it's closed. It will not deal any damage. And that's what I took advantage of right now. Okay, and another shotgun blast should just about do it. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Nothing but dust. So that's how you can get rid of him without using any grenades or, you know, messing around with a very, very tiny pool in that room. And now, where we find ourselves is a sort of the central courtyard which we were observing from the window over there. Now, what we did, we pretty much uh, saved up a lot of time, we avoided shimmying around all these ledges to reach that point by jumping up during the two spike-lined uh, hallways. Furthermore, before we settle in and get comfortable, we are gonna summon one skeleton over here by approaching the tile over here, so make sure to very quickly open up this switch. Ah, there it is. Do not blow him up as he's aligned next to the wall over there, okay? I will explain a bit later on why not. So again, let's lure him into the pool and do away with him. Okay, that worked. Cool. And now the door is open, so we don't have to go through those, uh, through that spike corridor or anything like that. We can just enter comfortably in. Now the normally intended path is that if we were to choose the right path, for example, or even trigger uh, both left uh, spike traps, we would find ourselves entering here into this area. And in order to reach that sarcophagus, we would have to jump here and start shimmying across many corners to finally reach that area. We no longer have to do that. Moreover, because by now we have three pieces of the armor, the right grief, left gauntlet and right gauntlet, the door over here opens. Otherwise, if you would do things in a different order, the door over here would be closed. And there is a very good reason for that, which I actually appreciate from the developer's side. I will explain. First, this is why we trigger the switch in the fountain. To get our hands on a couple of explosive arrows. Very cool. Standing jump will get us out. And 
the reason why I also told you not to blow up the skeleton appearing here is that the blast of the grenade will destroy two crates that are inside this room. Now, why would that be a bad thing? For some reason, and I think this is a bug, something about memory saving, if you destroy these two crates without being in this room, the large health pack and the explosive crossbow bolts will not be here. I know, right? So if you do destroy them from the other side with a splash damage of a grenade, you will miss out on these two items for whatever reason. So be very careful when you're tempted to blast that skeleton as soon as it appears. Okay, now, let's open up this sarcophagus and you might be surprised we are gonna see a very familiar item. Yes, it's the ancient Egyptian dildo, it's uh, Pharaoh's knot. So, for some reason, the developers decided to reuse an asset uh, that we used to enter the Pharaohs, that we used to enter Cleopatra's palaces. Um, I mean, let's not overthinking. The important thing is that it's a key item. Now, why is there this logic developed that if you do not have the three pieces of the armor, the door will remain closed? This is to ensure that you will not receive the Pharaoh's knot, allowing you to enter the next part of Cleopatra's palaces, which will lead you all the way to the very final room where you will find the remaining two pieces of the armor. So basically it's a safeguard that you have uh, three pieces of the armor before you continue down in the level to collect the other two, ensuring that by the end you have all five. I think this is really cool. Now let me do something we haven't done in ages and that is switch to normal shotgun ammunition. Finally! Because we are actually gonna use the shotgun not to knock a skeleton down but to deal damage to a particularly annoying enemy. Okay. Yes, and four shots should just about do it. I find this much better than wasting about a hundred bullets from the Uzis. They are more rare. Okay, and in here we have just one sarcophagus. If you're expecting a piece of the armor of Horus, you will be disappointed. Just a small health pack. I know, right? That's it. <laughs> And here is the door I talked about at the beginning of this level. So we are now on the other side. This, to my awareness, should lead into the sort of entry into the palaces with the fountain and everything else. But again, the door will not open. It's just, you know, I guess for visitors back when the palaces were operational, this should have been the main entrance and, you know, continue further down. Which makes a lot of sense. I mean, we took a lot of back rooms and... Uh, went through a lot of tight corridors and shady places to get here, but then again, we are a Tomb Raider, we are not an esteemed visitor. Mind you, there is another sarcophagus here, and it's purely optional, but you will get a ton of goodies inside. Let me show you. And there's also gonna be another skeleton spawning here, but I had no luck luring him to the pool, because we did not set off those spikes on our left. Also, trying to go around the palaces to reach the pool not only takes long, but the skeleton tends to get stuck on the stairway over here. So, really, I'm just gonna allow myself the luxury of blowing him up. But first, let's see what's inside the sarcophagus. This is insane. There's white shot ammunition, two normal boxes of shotgun ammunition, and also a large health pack. I mean, wow. But there is going to be an even more generous one, and that is going to be part of that one and only secret. So let me lead you right over there. By now you should have triggered only two spike traps, and if that's the case and you find yourself here, then good news, you can get the secret. Okay, so first things first, uh, box of normal shotgun shells, let's not forget about those. And this leads into the left path that we chose at the beginning, into the two spiky holes, right? Uh, let me use the binox over here. That's the sort of uh, step, the tile we use to jump up, that helped us get unstuck. So, these spikes are still powered up, so do not step on them. You can of course disarm them, but if you do, that's gonna be the third spike trap you set up. And the next time you try to use the scarab over here, it will explode and you will not reach the secret. So, let's instead do it the other way around and get our hands on the beautiful lovely secret and again they will align themselves to the very center of the tile you cannot pick them up by the way as they're doing this I'm pressing the action key Lara doesn't do anything doesn't disrupt it and there we go and now you can pick it up and that's the sweet secret charm we wanted to hear Okay, now observe what's inside the sarcophagus. This is insane and I wrote it down because there's just so much. There are explosive arrow, uh, arrows, there is a small health bag, 
there is one box of white shot shotgun shells and three boxes of normal shotgun shells. I mean... You, what's up with the shotgun ammunition in Tomb Raider 4? I, I, I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong, it's just so unlike any of the other, you know, previous entries in the series. Now, interesting thing, uh, since we set off three spike traps, again, the game doesn't tell you, I found out the hard way, wherever you try to place the scarab, it can even be here to try and trigger this trap, or it can even be on any neutral tile. This is what happens, and I want to show this to you, because the scarab will... Ah. <laughs> Just observe. <laughs> That's it. We lost the scarab and the winding key. Now, I was tempted to keep it in our inventory just to carry it over into the next levels, but actually, interesting thing, uh, once you reach the next level, uh, the broken beetle, the broken glasses, and actually by now even the broken mechanical scarab will all disappear from your inventory, so it doesn't really matter. And yeah, this is why getting this secret is such a pain. The game does not tell you this at all. There is nothing to foreshadow that the mechanical scarab is prone to malfunctioning. This is insane. This is just such an evil design. I, I can't imagine one developer petting the level designer on their back like, this is good, yeah, this is exactly what the level needs. Oh, man. Now, uh, let us put in the Pharaoh's Knot. Again, we, you cannot find it and pick it up from the sarcophagus behind the stone door unless you already have uh, the three pieces of the armor because this room will lead to the rear parts of the Cleopatra's palaces into her amazing throne room where the other two pieces of the armor will be. What's up ahead is again one of the most memorable parts of Tomb Raider 4 and also one of the most challenging rooms period. My goodness. We're gonna lose so much health here. Now, the moment you pick up the small health pack, a doppelganger slash golden Lara from Palace made us something along those lines. You know, I'd be terrified if I was to see this. It, it's like the trap stole her soul or something for picking up the small health pack. Now, here's the interesting thing. It's a statue, right? Statues generally don't move, but we've seen that happening, of course, in Tomb Raider 3. However, Lara uh, has this sort of professional jealousy she doesn't like rivalries. I mean, look at what happened to Von Croy. So this golden Lara, whoever the hell she thinks she is, Lara doesn't like her. She will aim her guns at her and you can start dealing damage. Now, here's the actually really wonderful thing about this and I would truly recommend you make a save file here for future reference. You can try out different weapons on golden Lara and since damage to Golden Lara will directly deal damage to you, you can observe what effect these have on your own health bar. Now, the effect is minimal for all weapons. Lara has some special shielding against friendly fire. But, uh, it's not about the damage itself, as it is about the damage differences in between different weapons. So if you want to see how much powerful shotgun is as opposed to pistols, shoot at Golden Lara. If you want to see how Uzis are powerful as opposed to shotgun, shoot at Golden Lara, and the same goes for explosives. You're not gonna find out using poison arrows on Golden Lara, I have tried, unfortunately it doesn't work, but the normal crossbow bolts or the explosive ones, pretty much everything goes except for the revolver, but you know, even try the super grenades, you will also see the flash grenades don't deal damage, that sort of thing, so this is a target dummy that I feel should have been in addition to every Croft Manor in every Tomb Raider entry, but alas. Nevertheless, this is really cool. Now, the bad news, um, the statue stays here, open and vulnerable for everyone to exploit it. Well, there are gonna be a couple of more harpies, the golden vraeuses, that are gonna spawn in this room, and they are gonna go straight for this statue. They are smart. They also probably don't like anyone else being made out of gold and don't like the competition. Uh, they will deal enormous premium damage to this statue, way more than you do with friendly fire. The, way more than they even deal to you. So the statue is something like a glass cannon when it comes to the harpy. So I have found out some fairly good and reliable ways of dispatching those things. But again, things can always go wrong, so I'm a bit paranoid about this. Moreover, there are two wall-mounted switches in this room that we need to trigger. And each of them will result in a fall that will take away one quarter of our health bar. This room is 
absolutely evil. Oh my goodness. And that is before we are even gonna get to the final boss fight of this level. So, am I gonna make it without using health packs? I know I keep saying this over and over, but now I really have my doubts. Okay, get those Uzis ready. And that should be... Yep, another Harpy spawning. Okay, nice dodge, Lara. Seriously. Okay, it sometimes becomes tricky and be very careful to position yourself correctly so that Lara does not start aiming at her golden self. She's jealous like that. She doesn't care if it's gonna cause her badly harm, right? Good. So we managed to dodge the magic missiles. We didn't take any damage from that bloody harpy. That is very good. Because we need at least half of our health bar for the final boss fight. And even then, that's no guarantee we'll make it. Okay, and now let's walk to the ledge. And kill it as fast as we can. Uzis are very accurate, surprisingly. It still lives? God damn it, Lara, shoot it! No, the harpy! My god, you're not feeling well today, are you? Whew, that was a close call. If it would have gotten even lower, then it would be totally impossible to hit it from here. Whew, okay. Now, mind the crate here, it's empty, so nothing to worry about. And of course, there is a jeweled skeleton just waiting for its chance. Actually, there are going to be, I think, three more skeletons we'll need to put up with. And again, I'm scrolling to the wrong side. Wonderful. So let me switch back to white shots and lure him in. Come on, friend. No time like present. You can do it. I believe in your old brittle bones. No, actually, I don't. Okay, that's done with. And mind the crate over here. This one is, in fact, not empty. It will spawn a large health pack in the corner over there. It's so dark and so missable, I prefer to pick it up so I don't forget about it later. Furthermore, uh, I mentioned those two wall-mounted switches, right? One on this column above us, the other on the other side. Uh, unfortunately, this is what's necessary to open these panels. You cannot crowbar them. Why? Why can you crowbar identical panels in the same Cleopatra's level? I know it was our first visit, but it's still the same level. But later on you can't is beyond me. This is really not a good way of communicating level design with a player. Now, we'll need to open both to get our hands on key items, which will combine into a very unique looking key that we'll insert on the pedestal over there, which will allow us to continue into Cleopatra's throne room, right? Now, I first want to open the left one as we are facing the exit, because this will result in another harpy spawning, or Reyes, I prefer to call them harpies. I feel like I'm insulting them, which is immensely satisfying. Now, that harpy spawns at such a point that you need to get rid of it immediately. If you linger or hesitate for even a second, it will get to your statue and completely ravage your health bar. So I'm gonna get those explosive arrows ready. And throw the weapon, make a roll. Okay. Okay, done. Deal. Thank goodness. And we're also lucky because it was trying to shoot missiles rather than move to the statue. Nice. So this might have, might, well, <laughs> might have and probably was even a bit wasteful. If it was shooting the bolts like that, maybe even Uzis could have done the job, but I really didn't want to risk it. This is the most dangerous of these Reyeses. But also the last one, so that's the good news. Now, all we have to worry about are skeletons. So, we trigger the switch on the left, let's trigger the one on the right. Before we start exploring what's behind those doors, just to get the health bar damage over with. There we go. So, we pretty much didn't take any damage from any traps or enemies in Cleopatra's palaces, but we are down to half of our health. Yeah, I mean, this is the best shape that we can be in, but still. Okay. And now, yeah, that door over there has a skeleton in it, so you know what? I'm not gonna risk that he's gonna push us down or anything like that, so I'm just gonna jump back into this platform and get the shotgun ready. Safest way to get rid of him. What I also like to do when I feel a bit reckless is try and lure him to the edge, jump over him, flip in midair and shoot him, which uh, actually always worked so far, but I am getting a bit paranoid. Okay, there's... Uh, hmm. No, that's not candy, even though it looks like one. That's an ornate handle. We're actually missing what's supposed to be attached to the top of that ornate handle, so that we can find in the small gap over here. This is truly terrifying. Look at this face. I don't want to see this when I wake up. Okay. Whew. 
Now, the interesting thing is also the naming of these objects. So an ornate handle and Hathor effigy. I think Hathor was an Egyptian goddess. I'm not really sure what of. But when you combine her effigy, well, her head pretty much, into a lollipop with the ornate handle, you will not get a lollipop, you will get a portal guardian. And somehow, it will be balanced precariously on this switch and open up the path into Cleopatra's palaces. Now, mind you, this is not all because we will have summoned a skeleton. Now, this guy tends to sidestep and troll you. He's just gonna lie there in wait behind the corner. So, again, be patient with him and lure him back here to try and make a very clumsy attempt at it. Perfect. So that's it. Yeah, don't let him lure you in too far and hit you with that rusty kopesh. Just you do the luring. Use Lara's allure to lure him. Finally, a box with Uzis. Uh, still, not a good idea to use Uzis here, but there you go. And now, before we enter the throne room, I want to make something very clear. No, I'm not going to save here because I'm, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Instead, let's ensure that we have the normal grenade ammunition equipped and we also have the explosive ammo. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you, well, I'm going to show you the difference between a grenade launcher and the explosive arrows on crossbow for one and for all and settle the differences and show you how superior the crossbow is even considering we have 106 explosive bolts as opposed to 13 grenades uh, the balancing makes no sense but either way we are gonna face off against two Cleopatra's guardians now thankfully we are not gonna face two of them at the same time it's gonna be one activating and then when we defeat it another one is gonna be activated so one I'm gonna kill with seven grenades and the other I'm gonna kill with seven explosive arrows and that will be a definite proof that the damage is identical but the explosive from the crossbow fly true and straight and also faster. You don't need to manually reload like with a grenade gun. Well, you don't at all. Lara does the manual reload, but you know what I mean. So, crossbow, superior weapon, unless you are using super grenades or flash grenades for grenade gun. So, let's get that equipped and step on in and observe Lara do something that's worth dying for. May I just point out how cool it is Lara set on Cleopatra's throne? I mean, if she wouldn't, these guardians would not appear. Okay, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six, that's seven, and now... Oh my god, we almost lost all our health. I'm afraid I will have to use a health pack here. So let's do this. We are still doing great. And now, seven explosive crossbow bolts. Oh my goodness gracious, you know what, we possibly might have survived that, I'm not particularly sure, but still, this was a health pack well used. Oh, and remember me saying that I'm not sure if we actually used one in the past or not? Let's bring up the statistics screen. We have. Okay, so this means we have at some point early on in our adventure already used a small health pack. So this was the second one bringing us to health packs use total of one, I see. And again, it will not show you what's past the first decimal. It will not show 1.5 like the previous games did, because reasons. Anyway, now you see why crossbow is better. They fly straight, they fly fast, they shoot fast, and you don't have to lob them and pray that they will not bump around corners or anything like that. So, thank you very much, crossbow. This was an explosive fight. May I also point out how absolutely terrifying the Guardians were? I mean, they had human face on those masks. That, uh, and the ungodly grunts and noises they made. That really unsettled me. But now we are going to find the remaining uh, boot and also the probably most impressive and heavy and golden laded piece, the breastplate. So Lara, now you can have some actual protection, you know, for those Toblerone things. 
But no, she will put it on Horus instead. Ah, her loss. Now, when you picked up both, again, ensuring that you have the complete armor of Horus, let's take a look. Breastplate, left grief, right grief, left gauntlet, right gauntlet. The trapdoors will open up over here and you can finish on the level. Now, uh, interesting thing is that there is no helmet of Horus. Uh, the helmet is already part of the statue on which we will be putting these things. So, yeah. Uh, think about it, putting armor on a statue, how would that even work? Well, anyway. Uh, whatever happens, Lara, you can claim you've sat on Cleopatra's throne in her palaces in Alexandria. I mean, that alone made the entire adventure up to this point, and probably even after, worth it. That is so absolutely amazing. You can put that in your CV. Okay, and the moment we step into the darkness, that will be it. Actually, let me throw a flare just to show you that it in fact leads into a mysterious corridor. See? There's something around the corner. But the first step over here will already trigger the level exit. So, let me do what I like to do most, and that is have a very satisfying look at the statistics screen. So, this was our second visit into Cleopatra's palaces, the last Alexandria level, and we have found all 32 items, we have killed all 15 enemies, and we have found its one and only secret. We have also, unfortunately, this was the second time we used a small health pack, but come on, it, it was well deserved. So with that in mind, I am now closing the enormous Alexandria chapter after a month of work. And, you know, it will again be probably another month of work before I'll start uploading the levels from the next uh, area, from Cairo, because it's also interconnected and non-linear like the Alexandria. From what I remember, it should be a bit shorter and less complicated. Alexandria really wins that place, but, you know, again, I want to ensure the quality is there and I will not misinform you, uh, even via the scrolling statistic text in, in any of the videos. So I'm going to have to do everything, then record everything, then double, triple, quadruple check everything, and that's when I'll be uploading, and then you'll know I am providing you with the correct information. So. Again, thank you for the patience. I will make an immensely satisfying save over here. And I will see you guys next time after... Well, actually, Lara still has a brief detour to make through uh, Jean-Yves' office in Alexandria. I'll see you there. Congratulations! You survived to fight another day. I trust that you now have all the armor. Jean-Yves shall be escorting us to Cairo, not entirely of his own free will, I admit. A simple trade, his life for the armor of Horus. Do not take too long thinking it over. Yours apologetically, Werner.